Hello, my name is Denis Efremov and welcome to my presentation. This is a tool presentation, the tool is named CV Hound. What it is for? It automates the checking of kernel sources for missing fixes of GNOME CVs. I started this project about 10 months ago. The tool works as a static analyzer and to detect missing CV fixes. The tool doesn't use kernel version, doesn't require a development log and doesn't need to know how to build your kernel. But internally, the tool contains a special rule for each CV it is able to check for. As for now, I describe it more than 200 kernel CVs. The main value of the tool in these descriptions, and I will talk about them in detail a bit later. Additionally, the tool supports various filters like searching subdirectories or specific files. Checking of code on the enabled in a build config also supports it. Uh, kernel config analysis is based on the Undertaker project's code. I reuse CV metadata from linuxkernelcvs.com for information like CWV and CVSS scores. This is a very hard work to collect and maintain the metadata and many things to the project. Not so long ago, I also added report generation in JSON for CI systems. Let's talk a bit about why, in my opinion, do we need to automate these checks and why the automation is not so simple. I'm pretty sure what you all already know these facts, but I would like to explicitly mention them once again in my motivation part uh, to give you a better understanding of why the tool works this way and not another one. Some automation is highly desirable because we've got thousands of CVs assigned to the Linux kernel. Most of them are in recent years. Records are in different databases and many databases are somehow synchronized with each other. Lack of information about vulnerable versions, wrong commit references, it's a common problem for many records. And moreover, uh, we've got national databases with alternative identifiers. For example, in Russia, there is a stack database with BDU identifiers. And you can just take a kernel version and check whenever your kernel is vulnerable or not, because uh, you need to know vulnerable version intervals for many kernels uh, like stable. LTS, XLTS, super long-term support, and even after that, you will face that there are kernels with, I would say, an independent backporting process. And sometimes when you do your own backporting, uh, you take also features from mainline to, for example, speed up the things, or you backport even full drivers. And in this case, the information that a specific vulnerability was a in a mainline kernel version from, from version A to version B gives you very little information. Uh, moreover, the kernel is a highly configurable project and some configurations are vulnerable while others aren't because a driver is simply not enabled. It's a common workflow when developers backport on the fixes for kernel paths they care about. After all, why would you care about a floppy driver if you prepare an Android kernel? Gitlog is not always available to you because, as far as I understand, GPL license doesn't require you to publish um, a development history. And even if you have an access to it, without being a kernel developer, it's very hard to say what uh, CVs are fixed and what are not uh, based on the log. Uh, because there can be revert commits and early version of patches for mailing list and uh, many other things. Uh, when I started tool development, I kept in mind a couple of use cases. Uh, for example, let's imagine that you are an engineer in a certification lab and you have full sources for a device. And one of the requirements uh, in a certification procedure is that all known CVs should be fixed or mitigated somehow. So you need to check maybe a hundred of CVs in the kernel. Or maybe you are a system administrator and you can just update a kernel because of third-party modules uh, that simply don't work with newer kernel versions. And you want to know what administrative measures you need to take to mitigate possible bad consequences of an attack. So you need to start by getting a list of CVs you need to take care of. Uh, maybe you are a pen tester and you don't want to find new exploits, uh, so just extract the config file from working kernel, take the closest possible kernel version and get a list of CVs to check on a device. Or maybe you are a kernel developer and you are doing your independent uh, backporting 
and you just want to double check yourself. Maybe you want to enable additional kernel models like one of network file systems on your phone and you also want to check the state of these drivers in a tree before enabling them and making your phone vulnerable. As I already said, developers sometimes don't backport fixes to not enable drivers. So how to implement this kind of checker? Actually, we've got one in the kernel for more than 10 years already. It's called Coxenel. Uh, without reinventing the wheel, I use it in the CV Hound tool. Uh, many kernel developers already use Coxenel and know how to write rules for it. Coxenel is a static analyzer uh, that allows you to describe uh, scene language patterns in a C language with additional meta expressions and find the real code that falls into these patterns. Uh, here is an example of, co of Coxenel rule. It describes a code pattern when we copy data from user space and compare it uh, to some node string in the kernel. The pattern is a code with copy from user and string compare calls with upper E meta variable to match variables and pointers and dot 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 notation to match everything else. Uh, the Coxenel will find many different functions for us that fall into this pattern in the kernel. Uh, usually it's uh, that what you want when you write a rule for a static analyzer. And um, to make uh, this rule as many cases as possible, uh, cases of API misuses, for example. Uh, but in the CVR Hound tool, I want a contrary thing. I want to search only for one case in the kernel and check it. Is it present uh, in the kernel or not? So I add additional detail, details to the rule uh, to make it more strict, to detect only one case, but detect it through all changes uh, from the commit where it was introduced to commit where it was removed, breaks commit where vulnerability was introduced and to the fixed commit where it was removed. So I still need to abstract uh, out from such details as, for example, variable names. Uh, some statistics to give you a better feeling of how much effort you need to take to write these detection rules. I started the project about 10 months ago, and since then I have described more than 200 CVs. Most of them were assigned to the kernel in the last three years. I spent only 42 days adding at least one detection rule to the project, uh, and there were only 8 days when I spent the whole day writing rules. Usually I can describe more than 10 rules in a single day. Each rule is tested uh, that it detects a CV in, a, in the interval from breaks commit to the fixed commit, and each rule is tested outside this interval that it doesn't detect a CV. Uh, to write a detection rule. I take a commit that introduces a bug and a commit that fixes it. I need uh, these commits only to test the rule. Otherwise, I don't need them. Like I already said, the tool doesn't need a git log to work. Sometimes finding uh, a fixed commit is not trivial. I even maintain my own list mm, of wrong fixes tags uh, that I found in different fixed commit. Uh, usually, it takes about 5 to 10 minutes to draft an initial version of a rule and about 10 uh, 12 minutes to test it. Uh, there can be many iterations of refinements and testing. Let's have a quick demonstration. I reverted uh, a floppy fix from 2018 on top of 5.13 kernel. And usually, uh, to run the tool, all that you need is to specify a path to the kernel uh, sources directory. But I'll also limit the search to floppy.scene. And the tool will find it for us. Uh, just to give you a bit more information, uh, the tool internally uh, calls Coxinel with different uh, patterns. And Coxinel also outputs uh, a line number of a match for us. To check a kernel config option, uh, you also need to specify a path to .config file. 
And in this case, the tool will output for us uh, a config option that enables floppy.c. And it will also check .config file for this option. And it's indeed enabled. Uh, another example. Here, I partially reverted uh, two capability checks on top of 5.13 kernel. The original patch adds four of them in different functions. And uh, I reverted only two of them. And the tool will output for us uh, exactly two lines uh, of the functions where capability checks were removed. Uh, and I would say it's a pretty common when uh, there is an error in backporting or um, you accidentally revert uh, parts of uh, commit uh, later. Let's get back to the slides. Uh, let's look at rules and some typical patterns that are used to describe a CVE. We will start from simple cases and move to more complex ones uh, to give you a better feeling of extensibility of this approach. CV on the left uh, just removes uh, some code from the kernel. And uh, in this case, uh, we can simply search uh, for removed code. And if we will find it, it definitely means that the fix wasn't applied. CV fix on the right adds a capable check. Uh, and to describe it, uh, we use some real answers like function name, global variable name, and abstract out from details like local identifier name, and use dot 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 to match everything else. There is a dot 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 when not equal uh, notation, uh, that means match everything if it doesn't contain uh, this line. Uh, so we'll match row so create if it doesn't contain capable call uh, before assigning uh, row so row oops to a pointer. And later I also added uh, ns a capable call uh, because capable was changed to it. Here uh, I use another approach and instead of using uh, dot 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 when not equal, I prepared three patterns and made uh, them depend on each other. Uh, so in the patch, we just add an initialization uh, to, we just add another entry to a global array. And um, to detect this, I need to check that there is a, indeed such constant in the enum definition, it was introduced in, in, in a separate page. I need to check uh, that there is a global variable and uh, I need to check that there is no initialization for this global array uh, with, uh, with this constant. So instead of writing uh, dot 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 when not equal, we can write a pattern and uh, check that XNL can find it in the sources. Uh, let's move to functions that change existing lines of code. Uh, the error here is uh, self-descriptive, wrong permissions. And in the patch, we simply check for them. In the rule, we simply check for them. Uh, this is a simple case when a fix uh, fully describes an error and diff contains full information that we need uh, to write detection. With this slide, uh, I want to show you uh, that uh, in most of the cases, uh, div um, doesn't contain enough information to describe a severe rule. So in general case, uh, fix doesn't contain full information and like for uh, this function, uh, raise, uh, raise access for, for a global variable. Uh, the patch just adds um, mutex lock and mutex unlock to one of the functions. Uh, but the error is in the combination between these two functions. And uh, to properly, uh, to reliably detect missing fix, um, I need to describe both of the functions. But was because one of, com of the commits adds uh, one 
function with mutex logs inside it in our commit adds in our functions and uh, third commit adds a global variable and the error is in combination between them uh, here is another case a simple patch that initializes a local a local variable uh, but to describe it uh, first I uh, need to check that there is a structure with a reserved field uh, inside it. Um, I don't remember exact details, but highly likely there is no information leak uh, if there is no reserved field in the, in the data structure definition. Uh, so we check here for the field, uh, for the copy to user call, and uh, we check for absence of uh, initialization. And uh, these receptions are enough to describe most of CVEs on practice, uh, but sometimes coccinel uh, is not enough uh, because it's only suitable for matching uh, C code patterns. And like in these cases, uh, we have um, errors in, uh, in an LD script and assembly changes. Um, you need to, to do different things. Uh, in the in a coccinel rule, you can write a Python code, and in this case, uh, with an LD script, uh, I check that an, in Python, uh, I check that uh, an LD script contains a special string with a regular expression, and I depend a pattern match on this check uh, before reporting an error. And in our approach is to fall back to regular expressions. And in this case, for a CV, it's also possible to write a uh, coccinal rule, but I decided to try a grab mode with a PCRE. Uh, regular expressions are not very readable, but they are very uh, powerful with all these uh, look ahead and uh, look behind expressions and many more features. So that's pretty much all approaches that are used to describe CV patterns, uh, future plans. Uh, short term plans include adding the tool to the kernel CI testing workflow. I already started to do this. Uh, it should be the same as adding a coccinel. I see no value in checking stable trees because I already do this when I develop detection rules. Uh, but this can, it can be interesting to check trees that are based on stable branches. And um, I also want um, to add more precise analysis of for kernel config options. As for now, it's done on a per file basis. And uh, if there is an if def inside a .c file, the tool may report uh, incorrect results. Uh, and I also want to add a filter for checking files enabled by a specific config options. Uh, like I already said, let's suppose you want to enable a couple of uh, config options on your uh, Android kernel, and you want to check is it safe, uh, is it safe enable to enable them or not, and you don't know what files will be built if if you enable them. A midterm plan is to add another checking mode to the tool. Mm, this lightweight mode uh, will check only the git log and uh, some of my colleagues asked me to implement this and uh, this mode will be useful mainly for kernel developers. Uh, the simple idea is to check that there is a breaks commit in your branch and there is no mm, corresponding fix commit uh, in, in the git branch. Uh, I already drafted an initial implementation for this and of course uh, you can just check uh, for commit IDs because they are different in different trees so you need to take into account things like commit title, commit author, commit time uh, to really check a git log. And there are many hidden stones here uh, with revert commits, uh, multiple commits that fix one CV and uh, of course you need a very good mapping between a CV and the breaks commit and fixes commit. And long term plan is to automatically generate detection rules based on a breaks commit, fixes commit, and history between them, and maybe some manual markup like 
this line should be present in the sources and this line should also be present in the sources and this line should not be present in the sources and I'm pretty sure it's possible to generate detection rules in more than 80% of the cases. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you for your time. Any questions?